Hi, this is Mr. West, and today we're doing a tutorial video on unknown variables and equations. This, of course, is from mathdrills.com. Make sure to check out mathdrills. They have tons of great resources for math, tons of awesome worksheets, so make sure to check them out. In this worksheet, we're going to talk about kind of two ways to go about these algebra equations, and I'm going to break it down into a couple simple steps, and let's go ahead and get started. So number one, we have 9 times n equals 45. Now, if this is your first time seeing letters in equations, know that we are trying to solve these equations by finding the value of the missing letter. So we see here that we have an N. We want to know what does N equal, okay? Now, if you're like, I don't know, why are we using the letters in math? Essentially, a variable represents an unknown amount. So we could use a blank instead. If we had nine times blank equals 45, you could do that. Or you could have nine times a question mark equals 45. Just know that N and question mark are the same thing. We don't know what they equal, and our job is to solve the equation so we can find the value of them. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to think to myself, 9 times what equals 45? Well, I know 9 times 5 equals 45. Now, you could do a lot of these problems just off the top of your head just by thinking about it, but I'm going to kind of break down a process. If you didn't know how to do that, well, how would we go about solving that? So I'm going to draw here. This is what I encourage a lot of students to do is kind of divide this into two sides where we have the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation, okay? And basically what I'm trying to show here is, does nine times five equal 45, question mark? Yes, it does, okay? The, it's balanced. The left side equals the right side. If I had um, something that's not true, like nine times five equal 40, well, that's not true, okay? It can't make an untrue statement. So that's the basic principle, is it has to be equal on both sides all the time. Okay, and using that principle, we can do stuff like add one, but we can't just add it to one side because that's not a true statement. That'd be 46 equals 45. If we add something, we have to do it to both sides, okay? And that keeps it balanced. That'd be nine times five plus one is 46. 45 plus one is 46. Both sides are equal and it's balanced, okay? So that's kind of two, some guiding principles before we get started and how we solve these equations. And again, you could probably just go through these rapid fire and just find the values in your head, but I'm showing you a process that will work every time. So here's what I'm thinking about. As I approach these problems, I want to know what is happening to my variable. And we see here it's being multiplied by 9. So to undo that, to go backwards, I need to divide by 9. Multiplication and division are opposites, or inverse operations, so it will undo the multiplying, and we're left with just n. If you're a little bit more advanced, you could find uh, know that if we divide 9 by 9, and then times that by n, that's the same thing as 1 times n, which is just equal to 1n, which is the same thing as n. So that's a lot uh, for those advanced students, but if you're just comfortable knowing, okay, if we do the opposite of multiply by 9 by dividing by 9, it undoes it, we're good to go, okay? But we can't just do it to one side. So you see here, I just did it to the left side, okay? If I do it to one side, I also have to do it to the other side, so I also need to divide by 9 over here. So I have 45 divided by 9, and that equals 5. On the left side, this canceled out. I'm left with just the n. And on the right side, I had 45 divided by 9, and that equals 5, and there's my final answer. So that's kind of like the format I'm using for these problems in blue, and then I'll go from there. So this one, let's move on to number 5. We have h divided by 1 equals 8, okay? So kind of easy way to think about this problem. If we divide by 1 to one side, well, that means we want to undo that by multiplying by 1. Okay, so if I multiply by 1, I need to do it to both sides. This is the inverse operation because my goal is to get h by itself. So then I have uh, h by itself on the left side because divide by 1 and times 1 cancels each other out. And then I just have 8 times 1 on the right, and that equals 8. Or you could just think to yourself, well, h divided by 1 is just equal to h, and you can get h equals 8 right away. Okay, but that's just... That's an easier way to do it, but I wanted to be consistent in the way I'm applying these mathematical principles in each one of these problems. Be consistent, okay? So I want to draw this line, divide it up into the left side and the right side, and I see what is happening to V. V is being divided by 6, so I need to do the opposite, and that is multiply by 6. I can't just do it to the right side. I also have to do it to the left side. 
The divide by six and times six cancel each other out. That's the whole point. Inverse operations can cancel each other out. And I'm left with just V. That looks like a check mark. I'm left with just V. And then I have four times six, which equals 24. Now, I, for I forgot to mention this earlier, but we can check our answer. To check our answer, we can be like, okay, I got 24 equals V, but how do I know that's true? Well, I can plug it back in. I can say 24 divided by six, I plugged it in right here. Does that equal four, question mark? And it does, 24 divided by six does in fact equal four, so we're good. We got that one correct. Okay, let's move on to number 14. Okay, we have one times A equals two. Well, we know that's gonna be A equals two, but let's show the process. So we have times by one. We wanna undo the times by one by dividing by one, but we have to do it to both sides, so I divide by one, and I'm left with just A because these cancel each other out, and we're just left with A. That kinda looks like a nine. What's going on with my handwriting? So I have A equals, and I have two divided by one. Well, that's just two. So A equals two is my answer to number 14. We got a couple more to do. So number 18, we have F plus nine equals 10. Good, we have some addition finally. So what do I do? Well, it's being, what's happening to F? F is being added to nine, so I need to do the opposite, which is subtract nine. If I have plus nine, subtract nine, that cancels out, and I'm left with just F. But I can't just subtract nine from the left side, I also have to do it to the right side. So I have 10 minus nine, and that equals one. And that's gonna be my final answer, I can check. Does one plus nine equal 10? Yes, it does, I substitute it in. Now, I wanted to talk real quick, there's not one on this page that looks like this, but just in case you see a problem like this, what if you have F minus nine equals 10? Well, we're gonna do the opposite. Instead of subtract nine, the opposite is add nine. Minus nine and plus nine cancel each other out. They're opposite, they're inverse operations, and we're gonna be left with just our missing variable. And that equals, sorry, I forgot to add nine, that equals 19, 10 plus nine, 19. We can check our answer, does 19 minus nine equal 10? Yes, it does, so we know we got that correct. Okay, so that was just an example problem, that was a bonus. Now number 20, so we have F time, uh, S times six equals 18. We need to do the opposite by dividing by six to both sides, here's my dividing line. I need to make sure I do this on both sides. I'm left with just the S, and then three on the left side, S equals three, final answer. Now I wanted to go over these yellow ones. These yellow ones are actually tougher than tougher than they look, okay? So you could probably do this in your head. 15 minus something equals nine. You could find out that X equals six, okay? But let's say you wanted to apply the same way I've been doing it. I just need some space, I'm erasing some stuff. You wanted to apply the same principles, okay? So you wanted to have your dividing line. And you're like, okay, I see that there's a 15 here. That really means we're adding that 15. Okay, you might think, oh, I need to subtract 15. That's really a plus 15 right here, okay? And it's a minus in front of the X. It's a positive 15 minus X, so really we have to subtract 15 from both sides. If we do that, we don't get six, okay? We don't get six. Whoops, sorry, right my line. We would get negative six equals negative X. So these ones are trickier to do the same principle. Just know that you can. Okay, and then you would have to divide by negative one, divide by negative one, and you'd get x equals six. Okay, so that's if that's over your head, that's okay. You're gonna learn that in later years, but I just wanted you to be aware you can still apply the same principles and get the answer. We know that 15 minus six equals nine. It's not gonna be negative six, okay? So just be careful with those ones. Uh, there's another couple that are like that. Oh, by the way, number two, this one you don't even have to uh, worry about doing this line and the reason is the variable is already by itself So you just have to do this calculation on the right P is already by itself We don't have to do something to both sides We just have to calculate what this equals and that equals 4 P equals 4 Okay, so if you have a variable already by itself, don't worry about doing something to both sides This one's gonna be another case where the variable is already by itself, but let's go ahead to number 12 This one is surprisingly difficult. Okay again, you could probably think to yourself 12 divided by something equals 2 you know you're gonna get z equals six, okay? But if you wanted to do this way, this time we're dividing by z, okay? So if you're dividing by z, you would wanna do the opposite and multiply by z to both sides. What does that do? Divide z and multiply by z, cancel out, and you're left with two z, two times z equals 12. This is an advanced move. So again, if you're good with z equals 6, that's fine. I want to show you they can still apply the multiplying, keeping the left and right side balanced. 
and then we would divide by two to both sides to finish this off. This is a two-stepper, okay? And then we'd have z equals six because we'd get the z by itself after we divide by two, and then we'd have z equals 12 divided by two, which equals six. So that one appears easy, but it's a little bit tougher than it looks. This is another one. Um, I wanna apply kind of the same way. We did it a different way where we subtracted 15 in this one. We could subtract eight, but I'm gonna show you that we can add w to both sides. Okay, so here's my dividing line. I can add w and then I get three plus w equals eight. Okay, so I added w, you can move the variables around like that too, and then I subtract three from both sides to get the w by itself. There's the w, and I get w equals eight minus three, which is five. Does eight minus five equal three? Yes, it does. So those are all the examples that are a little bit uh, more difficult than they appear. Uh, I hope that's helpful for those that are ready for those steps. If you're not, again, you can just do it in your head. Um, but the real trick for future algebra is being able to do things on both sides and isolate the variable. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.